I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my House of Love! And welcome to the latest chapter in the ongoing saga of the Men in Black. Yes, it's been a long time, but Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones are finally back for a third instalment. And this time, it's all about time. Let's take a look, shall we? Released in 2012, Men in Black 3 once again follows our heroes as they seek to defeat an alien criminal. Boris the Animal swore revenge when Kay apprehended him, and now Agent J must go back to 1969 to stop him. Curiously, this movie garnered 68% on Rotten Tomatoes, making it the second highest rated after Men in Black 1. So without further ado, it's time for me to bring you the latest, if not the last, in the series Men in Black 3. There's a prison on the moon, and one inmate wants out. This is our villain, Boris the Animal. Boglodite. Murderer. Last of his kind. We'll fill in most of the details as we go, but all you really need to know for now is that he's got a grudge against Kay. Back on Earth, it's 14 years since Agent J first joined the MIB, and a routine investigation into a dodgy restaurant swiftly degenerates. Because Boris the Animal is in town. <laughs> but then, there's a tremor in the timelines, which leaves J with a craving for chocolate milk. And worse, the Boglodites are about to invade. Now, in the original timeline, the Boglodites were stopped 40 years ago when Kay deployed the Arknet, a form of defensive shield with no other planets in range worthy of violating. The entire Boglodite race simply ran out of resources and died. So how did Boris survive for 40 odd years in prison? Well, either way, if he's managed to change the past, that can't be good. Jay must go back to 1969, which involves jumping from a high point, for some reason. But shock! It works! Boris goes back to 1969 to prevent his arm being shot off, and to kill Kay and capture the Arknet, which is probably how the Boglodites have survived for 40 years in this timeline, without having to invade Earth. Also, if Kay's been dead for 40 years, then who recruited Jay? But yeah, 1969, the year of the moon landing. And it leaves Jay in a hostile time frame. And it's too late to save Roman the Fabulist. But not to meet Agent Kay, who almost neuralises Jay, before he comes up with the goods. Which leads our heroes to the studio of one Andy Warhol, and we meet the last Arcanan, until Boris scares him off. But after Pi and a timely distraction, they catch up to Griffin at the baseball stadium. This is where our heroes receive the Arknet, an energy defence shield which protects against the Boglodites, and presumably some other forms of the worst scum in the universe. But Boris the Animal isn't far behind. Our heroes rescue Griffin. But oh dear, future Boris just dropped in. At least our heroes have gotten the Arknet. But despite Jay's best efforts, Kay goes to Cape Canaveral along with him. Cape Canaveral. Launch site of NASA space missions, including today's mission, Apollo 11. The first manned mission to the moon. And so the stage is set for our finale. Our heroes must place the Arknet on Apollo 11. And contend with two Boris the Animals. But Jay has one last trick up his sleeve. And so the future is restored. And Jay drops out. And so our movie ends back in the present day as our heroes reunite 
ready to head off to new adventures. It was of crucial importance that Kay tip his waitress. Anyway, that was Men in Black 3. And actually, I'm gonna put this one into my house of love. This isn't MIB 2, or even MIB 1. And while it still has some of the same problems that the other two movies had, it's at least missing one of them, the frankly far too short runtime. Because this movie weighs in at around 90 minutes before credits, and 101 in total, and it does feel far less compressed, and even has time for a little more character bonding, which is needed when we meet the younger Kay. As to the performances, Smith and Jones, or what we see of Jones, as he's replaced for a fair amount of the movie by Josh Brolin, are still the same mix of streetwise and grumpy, while Smith and Brolin quickly develop a rapport, and Brolin's channeling of Tommy Lee Jones in his youth, being that the 1969K is supposed to be 29, is quite impressive, and somewhat livelier, as there is a spring in his step. Of the rest of the cast, Jermaine Clement is a suitably gruff and menacing boglodite, Emma Thompson a calm and collective new chief in the shape of Agent O, while Alice Eve is a little too terribly English as her younger self, and we have to mention Michael Stuhlbarg as fifth dimensional Arcanan Griffin, who doesn't get much range, but at least isn't a pain to watch. And it's third time lucky in terms of flow, as the movie is so much less disjointed as it follows around Jay's attempt to stop his partner from being killed, and restore the past, and the fate of the Earth, all while on the clock. And it is at least that much smoother than two, as once again, like one, it seems to be Jay's story. But as ever, this movie isn't without its flaws. The villain, while being much less ephemeral in his threat, is still really not featured that much. The back half of the plot is crammed into the space past the hour mark, and the romance between the young O and K seems a little contrived to me, and there were far fewer practical effects on this one. Most of Boris's fingers, claws and the like were entirely CG from what I could see, but this one isn't too. It does kind of invoke the spirit of one, where Jay is out of his element in an unfamiliar world, even if he's a seasoned agent by this point. So yes, this is a good film. And if the series never recaptures the near-universal love it gained for its first showing, Men in Black 3 is, at least in my opinion, some way towards that goal. So put away your Neuralizer and settle in for a movie night with the entire trilogy. Or maybe Neuralize yourself first, to see them all again for the first time. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? Or if you want to be extraterrestrially awesome, check out my crowdfunding links in the description below. But for now, this is Agent FM wishing you... Splendid Ver folks.